Days of Future Past is a 2014 film which I have to admit Captain America was my most anticipated film of the year but this was definitely a close second so you should have seen my shock my amazement when I was lucky enough at the last second to get tickets to a screening for this film now for anyone who is familiar with the comic books, they've already probably know this plot pretty well. But just in case, a quick summary. We see the future, and in this future, this war has gone so bad between the humans and the mutants. We're at the point now where the government has made these giant robots called the Sentinels. And these Sentinels are going around killing mutants almost extincting them so now you see the last remaining mutants and they last resort they decide to send Wolverine's consciousness into his younger body from 1973 once he's back there he has to find a young Professor X a young Magneto who the two of them at this point hate each other the most he has to bring them together and try to stop this war from happening before it gets started. Now, what I thought of this film was, I loved it. I really, really enjoyed this film. I have to say it exceeded my expectations, which is a great thing, because I did not want to be disappointed by this. Some of my favorite things, I mean, seeing the future, seeing just how bad the world looked almost, how much this war has just weighed on everyone, and seeing the mutants at such dire straits and seeing who was left was almost saddening. But it was also really cool to see some of the original cast back, like Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, hell, even Holly Berry as Storm. Some people don't like her. I like her as Storm, so it was cool to see her back. You have Kitty Pride, who Ellen Page, I always thought was a perfect choice for Kitty Pride, So that was awesome. Iceman, Colossus, even Bishop. Again, very cool, the future stuff. Hugh Jackman is always great as Wolverine, so there's nothing to be surprised about there. But when he does go into the past, I even liked the first class cast that comes back. Uh, like James McAvoy, who I loved his arc as Professor X. There's a lot of questions on him being so down on himself and so voided of hope. But I love that. Seeing Professor X at that such low level, it's something I thought I'd never see. And it made me love and appreciate the character so much more because Patrick Stewart, we've already seen him become that experienced and, and good leader. So watching him get to that point. Michael Fassbender, I can't praise enough as young Magneto. I love him as young Magneto. I mean, if I can, if we can just get him to play this version of Magneto, I would be happy. You, you see him, he's pretty much a villain, but I love how they walk the line of that. Like, you, you hear his point of view, you hear his reasonings for what he does, and you actually go, wow, I actually see his point. I agree with this guy. I, I don't blame him for the stuff that he's done. Uh, Nicholas Holt is there as Beast, and I know there's some question even with Beast and Xavier on why they are the way that they are in pictures. Like, why is Nicholas Holt looking like a human when he's supposed to be in Beast form? Why is Xavier walking around in the past? And I I also had those those questions and wondering what was going on. Trust me, it all makes sense in the movie. I actually like the explanation because again, it explored their characters in different ways. Peter Dinklage, great actor. He plays Bolivar Trask, and anyone who watches Game of Thrones already knows how great he is. Now, my friend who came with me, he laughed every time he saw Peter Dinklage, and it's not just because he's a little person. I mean. I think he just had it in his mind from when he was in that movie Elf and how goofy that scene was that I guess seeing him in a suit just reminded him too much of that. So I guess if you don't watch Game of Thrones, I don't know, maybe you can't take him seriously, but I just thought he was great. I really enjoyed him in the film. I love that it wasn't just that he hated mutants. He, 
he did have his reasons for why he was doing what he was doing. And Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence almost steals the show here. I mean, she got so much to do as Mystique, especially compared to First Class. Mystique is all up in this movie, and I loved it. I loved the way how they played her character as a strong female character, and she was on her own. She didn't just rely on Magneto. She was out there. She's actually very crucial to the main story. It's another question people have as far as the original cast and the future stuff because so much was being cut that it's like, well, how much of the future are we going to get? And yeah, maybe they could have had a little bit more, but I was impressed by how much of the future we got. Not only at the beginning, but they did a good job almost sprinkling it throughout the film. And I felt like I got enough of the future in the original cast. I was very happy with that. The action, I loved. Seeing the Sentinels, finally, in live action, I got a real kick out of. I did see the movie in 3D. I have to admit, it wasn't like the 3D was that in your face. But there were a couple of scenes, especially the one scene with Quicksilver, that I actually had a lot of fun with. Now, I know most of you have heard about the Brian Singer allegations and the rumors. I'm not really gonna talk about that. I just hope that whether it's true or not, I hope that, that this doesn't deter you from watching this movie. I hope that you still go out and check this movie out when it does come out because it was that fucking awesome. My rating for Days of Future Pass, I'm gonna give it a full price. Yes, I'm happy to say this movie deserves to be seen full price check this out anyways guys let me know in the comments below if you plan on seeing x-men days of future past thanks for watching like and subscribe later